Hey y'all, so you just installed Proxmox 8 in a clean install and now you want to go ahead and make sure that everything is up and running and ready to go correctly. So here are the first few things that I do every time I set up a new Proxmox 8 server. I will put all of the commands in the description below. So I'll see you on my desktop and we'll get right into it. There you go. So I am at Proxmox and the, what you need to do to log into Proxmox, the Proxmox GUI is you're going to put in the IP address of your Proxmox server and then you are also going to put colon 8006. This will get you to it. You'll have to click advanced or uh, that you agree there is no SSL or, or anything like that. So go ahead and agree to that and then you'll put in your root will be the username and the password that you created and set up. So let's go ahead and log in. Right now, I've got that you do not um, have a valid subscription for this server. Please visit Broxmox to get the list of available options. We're just gonna click OK. And if you look up here, I've got Paroxmox Virtual Environment 8.0.3. So I want to update my Proxmox server, and we can update it the way that it sits right now, but you are gonna get some errors. So if we run update or apt, update you will see that we got a few errors right there so we are fail we failed to catch the enterprise that's because we don't have a valid subscription so let's go ahead and make sure that we can resolve that so that we can get all of the updates and everything correctly and proxmox will work properly first thing that we need to do is you're going to ssh into into your device going and using putty or whatever your favorite ssh tool is with the ip address once you're logged in i'm going to go ahead and clear this out Oh, nope, clear this out. All right, so the first command that I want to run is I want to check my DNS to make sure that everything is set up because if it is just using like 127.0.0.1, then you won't be able to do the updates and it won't be reaching out to the internet. Maybe some things happen where it didn't get proper DNS from your default gateway. So the first thing we need to do is run this command, which is nano or slash etc comp resolve comp and you want to look right here and make sure that you have at least a name server for like 1.1 1 .1 or like cloud server and or if you do have a dns server already set up inside of your network you want it to be pointing to that one i'm using cloudflare so i'm just going to go ahead and leave that as default and i will do that if you do need to add one and it just says like 127.0.0.1 go ahead and put name server and then space 1.1.1.1 and that'll get you so that you're able to communicate with the internet now the next thing that we need to do is we need to update our repository so that way it'll pull it down the non-subscription so to do that we are going to edit our sources list our sources list it's going to be nano etc app sources list and like i said i will put all of this in the description below so we're going to press press enter right here these three we are going to leave we're gonna come down to the very bottom and we are going to paste in these three lines or these four lines. Now, if you look up there, there are some that are blue and they've got a hashtag in front of them. A hashtag is basically the way that you <clears throat> can put notes inside of Linux so that you can read them that the computer does not actually read them. So I could do like and subscribe And Proxmox does not read that. So just remember, if you do need to put some notes in there, always do a hashtag or pound sign. That way you can leave it there. And then it tells you what everything is. Once you have got those put in, go ahead and do Control X, Y, and Enter. Now we need to disable the enterprise repositories so that it won't try to pull those down. And we're first gonna start with the enterprise list. So it's gonna be this command nano etc app sources list forward slash pve enterprise dot list right here we're just going to press the pound sign and comment that line out control x y and enter so that is for the pb enterprise repository now we need to disable the ceph also to do disable ceph we're going to go to our ceph list it's going to be this command right here sources list dot d forward slash ceph list same thing, we're just gonna comment that out. Control X, Y, and enter. After we've done that, we can go ahead and do an update. So we would run apt, 
update. I'll go ahead and let this pull it down. And I have 76 packages that can be installed. So I'm gonna do apt dist upgrade. We're gonna click yes or Y for yes. And we're gonna go ahead and let this install. This will take a few minutes, so I will fast forward or I'll skip over this and I'll see you when this is done. All right, y'all, so that has finished and it looks like it took about two minutes for it to fully upgrade. So if you just wanted to upgrade your Proxmox server and not have any errors, you are good to go. You can actually start installing VMs and things like that and using your Proxmox server. But I'm gonna do a few other things like do PCI pass through, allow VLANs, even get rid of that non-subscription. So let's go ahead and enable PCI pass through. Now to enable PCI pass through, you do your device does need to support that. So you'll do you will need to go and look at the requirements for PCI pass through and make sure that your main board and your computer will support that. If not, it can cause some damage. It can cause some issues with your Proxmox server. So just make sure that you always check and make sure and that your Proxmox server can do this. So to enable PCI pass through, we're going to edit our grub. And we're going to use this command right here. Nano ETC default grub. Right down here where it says grub command line Linux default quiet. I am just going to comment this out and leave it there. And I'm going to add in this line. And just paste this in. So grub command line Linux default quiet Intel IOMMU on IOMM equals PT. Now, if you are not using an Intel processor and you're using AMD, you will just change Intel to AMD. Control X, Y, and Enter. Now, we need to make sure that all of our modules are being passed through correctly. To do that, we are going to go to Nan. We're going to edit our modules. We're going to go to Nano ETC forward slash modules. We're going to scroll down here to the bottom, and we're just going to add in these three lines. Once you've got those added in, go ahead and control X, Y, and enter. And the next thing that we need to do is update our grub. So it's gonna be update slash grub. And it's gonna start pulling that down. This might take a few more minutes, so we'll just go ahead and let this run through. All right, that is done. So what I do like to do at this point is go ahead and do a reboot. So we're gonna do reboot now. And once we reboot it, we're actually going to jump over into our GUI and Proxmox as everything we're about to do is a little bit easier over there. So I'm going to do reboot now and go ahead and let that reboot. While I'm waiting for that, we'll go, we can bring up command prompt to just ping it to make sure that it comes up. So to ping it, you're going to go to the IP address of, my, of your Proxmox server, a minus 10100.1.43 slash and then to do a continuous, you're gonna do dash T and it will go ahead and tell you when it pops back up. So right now it's unreachable. Here in a few minutes, we will see that it does come back up. All right, so once you start seeing that you get a reply from the IP address, that does mean that the Proxmox server is back up. So we can go ahead and exit out of this. I'm just gonna go and refresh my screen and you should be logged back in. If it does tell you that you need to log in, you'll just log in and go ahead and do all of that. Now, once we are here, we're gonna go ahead, the first thing we're gonna do is enable VLANs. Now, even if you don't have VLANs set up, it is okay, because once you kind of get into home lab, you're definitely gonna eventually set up VLANs. So you wanna go ahead and have your Proxmox server ready to go. So we're gonna come over here and we're going to go to PBE2, we're gonna to go to networks. And then right now I have just one NIC that is actually, that I'm using for my Linux server, or for my Proxmox server, and that is the default one. That is the one that I set up in the beginning. So right here, we're gonna click on that one, and we're gonna do edit, and go to VLAN aware, hit okay. Once we've done that, the next thing that we need to do is go ahead, and if you have some external shares that you want to use for maybe backups or before you already have ISOs installed on your on your network then this is a great way so that you don't have to push ISOs or do backups to a local drive on side your Proxmox. So I'm going to set up just SMB and we'll go ahead and do that. 
So we're gonna go to data center, we're gonna go to storage and then add. And I'm gonna do, like I said, SMB. So we're gonna come right here. I'm gonna do first one is gonna be backups. I'm gonna put the server address, then my username, and then the share. And I'm gonna click on backups. On right here where it says content, I wanna unselect disk images and do VZ dump, backup files, add. Now that has been added. The next one that I want to add is another SMB. And we are gonna call this one ISOs. It's on that same server. We're gonna unselect disk images. We're gonna do the drop down, unselect disk images, ISOs and container templates. Add. And now that is there. And we can come over here, click on PVE. And you'll see we've got backups, which is right here. I actually don't have any backups on this drive. But if we come over here to ISOs, I've already got some ISOs installed on this ISO file or on this ISO drive. So these, with having it as an SMB or as a share, I'm able to connect this to all of my Proxmox servers that I have in my network. And I wouldn't have to install each ISO on every single Proxmox server. So this does make it a little bit easier to have all of your ISOs in one location and you don't have to worry about installing them every time. So once we have got all of that done, the next thing that I wanna do is I just wanna get rid of that annoying little pop-up that comes in every time that I log in that says no subscription. To do that, we're just gonna stay right here. We're gonna to go to shell. So you can actually do all of these commands from the GUI. I like using like SSH or any some kind of SSH. It just makes it feel more normal for me. But I'm gonna go ahead and use it right here. And we're gonna put this command in, and I will put this in the description below. We're gonna paste that. Go ahead and click enter. It will take it a few minutes for it to think. And you might see that connection is closed. That's okay. So after a few minutes, it should everything should be good to go. Now what we need to do is we need to actually clear our cache and log out of Proxmox. So I will see you once I log back in, and we'll see if that no subscription is still there. All right, so I have went ahead and locked in, and now there is that there is no subscript that no subscription thing is going. Your Proxmox server is up and ready to go. There are some other steps that we can do later um, down the line, but this is just the best way to kind of get everything up and ready to go for you to get started in Proxmox 8. So I'll see you in the next video.